Guys, welcome, welcome, welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker, and today I've got a bunch of videos I'm putting all into one for my locals group. I'll be breaking them up into smaller, shorter segments for you YouTube gang. Lots of fun, interesting topics. Um, and, and the first one is going to be uh, this first one that I'm doing for the day, uh, the perfect example of... <laughs> of why women fail at relationships. Because we're, once again, we're gonna talk about Jana Hawking, Australia's dating guru, and she's been on lots of TV shows. And uh, if this is the advice women are taking from an almost 40 year old woman who can't seem to land a dude, I don't know what to tell you because uh, that is a perfect reason why I think women are, are failing if they're taking advice like this. And I'm, I'm gonna tease her a little bit and we're gonna talk about it. Um, before we get started too far into there, uh, uh, guys, oh, I did a call-in show, which you see down here in the bottom left. It's a little blue um, thumbnail. And uh, while it's not one of my most, you know, quote unquote, exciting videos, it's about an hour and a half. Um, the last 30 minutes or so, I talk about my trip to Peru and doing ayahuasca and how I've set reset my base levels to to find almost happiness and joy in anything I do in life. And, it, and so many of you say, hey, can you give us some advice or like, instead of just going talking about crazy stories, can you talk about something that's like legit? Um, I did for like an hour and a half and it's gotten like 44,000 views. I don't mind, I don't care if it gets 10 views, uh, but so many of you ask me like, oh, I, I want some some solid advice and something to really have some meat to, to kind of, to, to kind of chew on and think about a little bit. I did it for you. Um, so make sure to check out that video if that's what you're looking for. Otherwise, we'll just keep doing our crazy stories. Uh, so Jana Hawking is, uh, I think I'm pronouncing that right. Um, this is her her this is her tag of, of her dating. And both these stories I'm gonna read are about three minutes, not very long, but it's gonna give you a really good idea of what a lot of us guys see happening. And then women are taking this advice and they're failing miserably at dating. And 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 a lot of us are just sitting back and having a, a laugh about it. Uh, so again, she's kind of Australia's one of their go-to dating. She's been on TV, um, I'll read her bio here. It says, Jana is a collector of kinda sorta boyfriends and dating stories. So she collects men basically. She has worked in both TV and radio for the last 12 years, including a stint as a dating producer for The Bachelor. As the dating columnist for news.com.au, she can often be spotted in a dark wine by a bar with a potential suitor. She hosts the dating podcast, Jana with a J, as opposed to all the other times you spell Jana with a Q, and is also a regular commentator on Studio 10 and Triple M's late night show, Danny Lakey Live. So she's, you know, she's popular, no hate on the girl. I mean, I'm, I'm glad she's doing well for herself. But I, I want, there's an ongoing theme. And if you ever want to see, um, Jenna Hawking's kind of fun because if you ever want to see a train wreck of someone's life, just watch the stories that she writes and you'll find out every time she got broken up with, every time she dumped a dude, every time a guy did this, or she, like she puts it all out there. And, and I think that's great because it lets us guys kind of see what's going on in, in a woman's mind. And she's looked to as a dating guru. Here's some of her, her headlines that she writes. The harsh dating truth no one wants to hear. Jana Hawking often picks up duds when it comes to men. But there's an uncomfortable reason why it keeps happening. So she picks up a lot of duds. Again, she's coming up on 40. Still can't find the one. She picks up a lot of duds. But she's a dating guru. First date rules everyone should know. Dating rule women can't resist breaking. Uh, your best mate's acts is forbidden fruit. But what do you do when you can't resist? Uh, okay, so a dude, <laughs> so uh, a girl, a friend of yours breaks up with a guy and you can't resist him, so you're going to go for it, forbidden fruit. The appeal of dating a much older man, I'm actually going to read from that one. Easiest way to find a great boyfriend, sends, says the long-term singleton, Jana Hawking. Uh, she says she has a revelation about what she's been doing wrong in her quest for love. So now she's in love and with a serious boyfriend, right? No. Lockdown dating trends that need to stop. Solution to embarrassing sex text issue. Um, new bedroom issues with singles bubbles. Gr a gross reason rugged man wasn't the one. Like this girl, basically what she does is she goes out on a bunch of dates. She has a, a not a good go of it. And then she writes about her exploits. And, and I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. But then to call yourself a dating guru, give me a break. You're exactly what's wrong with the dating scene today. 
So let's let's read through one a couple of her stories here. Again, these aren't very long. This is from September 26, just a couple of weeks ago. All right. So September 26 is about three weeks ago now. She says, uh, um, here's the title of it on how dating an older man put her off dating apps. So an older guy made her say, oh, I don't need dating apps anymore. She said, most people have a type, but podcaster Jana Hawking went way against the grain with a recent love interest and it changed her perspective entirely. Her, her perspective has been changed for life three weeks ago. Remember, those, those little tidbits of information are important. She says, uh, are there people you can think of who you rid are ridiculously attracted to, but not at fir first glance? It happened to me last year. There was a guy I had met through another friend who was far outside my age bracket. Let's say a good 20 years older. Now she's 38 so that, or 37, something like that. So that means that he was 57, almost 60 years old, gents. Okay. So a lot of times when I say, oh, younger women will date older men. Here's like a professional dater, right? Here's a professional dater. And she's saying, wow, I'm really surprised how much I really like this guy. Haters going to hate, but here you've got a, a and, and she's not like uh, her, like, um, she's not an unattractive woman. Now, granted, again, 37, if you're almost 60, 37 is pretty prime real estate, I would say. Uh, so she, she, they go on to say, um, this darn pop up here. Uh, he decided I tickled his fancy and put on the charm big time. I always brushed it off. And while flattered, I had a bit of a chuckle about it. Then a few months later, I found myself in his hometown with a group of friends we were looking for an adventure and he's a fairly adventurous guy. So I texted him to see what he was about. He invited us to his house and we piled ourselves into taxis and made our way there fairly jolly from a fun dinner. When we arrived, uh, he had the music pumping, the disco ball, I kid you not, spinning above a wooden dance floor and introduced me to the wondrous elixir known as mescal. Now, let's pause here for a second, okay? Um, she's... She's, he's 20 years older and he invited her to his house and he has, this guy has a dance floor and a disco ball. I don't know about you, but that makes it sound like maybe if he has a dance floor, maybe he's a well-to-do guy. Could that have something to do with her interest in him? Ding, ding, ding. What do we have for her, Johnny? I bet it does. I bet the fact that this guy probably is doing very well for himself has something to do with it. But again, this is why I tell you younger guys, look, don't worry about chasing women. Chase your dreams, chase your money, chase your, your experience, get more worldly. Because here an almost 60 year old dude was dating a woman 20 years younger and he has his game together. Okay. So he can still, and again, like she's, she's getting up there, but she's not hard on the eyes. I guarantee you when she was a 20 something, she got all the attention. She said, no, I'm honestly not overstating this when I said we had the best, capital B-E-S-T, night. It was carefree, fun, and he just oozed this cool charm. He stayed up all night talking to my friends, taking a genuine interest in their stories, and played the ultimate host. The next day, I woke up to a text from him, and I was surprised when I felt butterflies in my stomach. Um, what's that about? I thought to myself as I dragged my hungover body out of bed. Again, it's all about the tingles. It's not how good you were to her. It's not how uh, mature or how you helped her through go through college or you helped her through a rough point in her life. It's all about the tingles, even when she's 20 years younger than this dude. She says for the rest of the day, he stayed on my mind. So when we hit the town later that night, I was excited to see him again. Now let's remember, this was a guy unlike anyone who's ever taken my fancy. He was spiritual and serious and well, the same age as my dad. Classic move, oh yeah. I'm telling you those girls with those daddy issues. Uh, if I'd seen him on the apps, I would have. it would have been a quick swipe left. While attractive, he wasn't my type. The thing is though, it turns out that he was. Again, more proof to stay off the apps, gentlemen, because it's just an instant snapshot of what she thinks of you. Unlike the usual loud class clowns with broad shoulders who usually turn my head, here was a guy who smelled like patchouli and had a beard I desperately wanted to stroke. Seriously, what, what the actual heck? For a month, I just leaned in. 
Yes, I let my heart pitter-patter for this man, and what a joyous ride it was. We had interesting conversations. He showed me a world I had never been around before, and I discovered that attraction is based on so much more than what we are led to believe. I would melt at the sound of his deep voice on the phone and get gaga over his earthy scent, and I felt an inward fire when he called me on my BS. Fast forward a month, and he sent me, it's a, it's not you, it's me text. <laughs> oh, wait, you serious? Yeah, he broke up with her. <laughs> he broke it up with her. Uh, she says, which for a little while broke this cold, dead heart of mine. Turns out while I was happy to learn about his interesting world, mine was just a little too foreign for him. Let me translate that, okay? She's cute. She's adventurous. But she's probably too wild for him. She still likes to go out and drink it up and party it up. Her world is probably still a little bit too much about her and not a, enough about the person that she's dating. How do I know this? We'll get to that because I have some very interesting, uh, some Instagram stuff that we're going to talk about with her. Uh, she says, at the end of the day, though, I wouldn't change a thing. It made me feel alive and realize that the blokes who I might have brushed off in the past could actually have been something perfect for me. Perhaps I need to dig a little deeper before I metaphorically swipe left on them. So that bloke you just swiped left on could have been the most ridiculously fun sense of humor and a voice deep enough to give Sean Connery a run for his money. Hmm. Might be worth going back to the old meeting people in real life thing just when this lockdown is finally over. Just a thought. Now, this is from just a couple of weeks ago, like three weeks ago. Now, here's the thing, okay? I If if Jana wants to stay single and Jana wants, or Jana, however she pronounces it, wants to to play the field... I have no hate for her, but she has articles where she's like, oh, I'm single. It'd be great if I just found the one and I just settled down to. But the problem is as long as she's been dating, as long as she's been out there, she doesn't have the ability to do that anymore. She's still caught up in the party life and the drinking life and the going out with friends and having the crazy nights, even though she's almost 40. Look, I haven't been in the, the club and wild bar scene since I was in my 20s. Like at the age of 30, I knuckled down and started working. A lot of you guys do this. You say, hey, you know what? It's no fun going to the wild clubs and getting dressed up and playing that game anymore. You'll go to a pub and watch a football game. Maybe have dinner, maybe hang out with a couple of friends, have a quiet night. I don't know too many dudes that are out clubbing it uh, into their 30s and 40s. But she's still living that lifestyle. And again, and we're going to jump over. I'll jump over to her Instagram in a second. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So that was from three weeks ago. Now here, as of October 7th, this is just, what, a week and change ago, 12 days ago? So not even two weeks. So three weeks ago, she met an amazing older guy. And maybe she should rethink things. And here's her follow-up, Jana Hawking, on why it's time to throw out the dating rule book. So at almost 40, she's having an epiphany of maybe I've done it wrong the whole time. They say uh, podcaster Jana Hawking has discovered the one and only dating rule that will ensure your date likes you for the right reasons. Wow, we've maybe finally after all this time, she's settled in. She says, let's be honest, lockdown has given us a lot of time to ponder and reevaluate our lives. Things that seemed important to us pre-bug have changed. Many of us have realized we're just more productive working from home or perhaps all the partying and trying to keep a full-time job was leading us to burn out. It also exposed something in me that I had a niggling feeling was there, but I uh, wasn't really ready to address yet. And that is that I'm actually a little bit lonely. Now, don't get me wrong. I adore my single life. I have a great network of friends, but falling asleep with my legs wrapped around a pillow and waking up to a dog licking my face just isn't what I envisioned for my 37-year-old self. You're a smart motherfucker. That's right. Yeah, you're starting to wake up. You're starting to become smart. What What is happening to Jana at this stage in her life? The attention, the validation, the all the things that she's enjoyed for all the years is starting to catch up. And now she says, you know what? I want something more. I want something that's serious. I want something that's steady. I want someone that's going to be there by my side. But her options are becoming limited. She is having an epiphany. She's discovering the wall. She says, add to that three months of weekends that I have felt like Groundhog Day, 
with no long lunches, birthdays, or weekends away to look forward to. And well, it's safe to say this realization was a real slap in the face. She's not getting the attention anymore. She's not getting invited to go out anymore. Or if she is, it's with the gal pals. But when those women end up finding someone, when those women have kids, when something happens in their lives, she's left out. And it's kind of lonely. Um, let me bring back the the overlay here so you can see it. Um, so it's kind of lonely for her. And again, you can, you, you know, haters going to hate and you can say age and all this other stuff. For her age, she is an attractive woman. But what she's finding out is the successful people, the people that have a lot going on in their lives, the entrepreneurs, the guy was the the uh, the guys with with cash, the guys that are good looking and the broad shoulders, they'll have a bit of fun with her. But when they want a relationship, when they want a girlfriend, they're dating down by 10, 15 years. Or she's having to date up 20 years like she talked about in the previous article. And again, for her age, she's not an unattractive woman. I do not want to like make it sound like I'm a hater. But at her age, her choices are going to be less. And now she's discovering this because of how much free time she has on her hands. Last Saturday when I woke up and realized that I couldn't cross the Harbor Bridge to visit my best friend and the day ahead wasn't look, was looking pretty solo, well, I shed a few tears. Luckily, Apple's show Ted Lazo was a saving grace. Um, yet, have you watched the series? Yes, I know I'm the last person in the world to discover it, but she, it's really good for a good little serotonin rush. So she spent her day watching TV and crying because... She didn't have any fun plans. Now, guys, how many of you have said, you know what, man, I, I when uh, there are days that I feel alone and there's days when I'm bored and there's days when I feel, hey, we all have those. We all have those. But she's looking for external uh, attention and external excitement instead of creating her own. You know, when I, I got here to Bozeman, Montana, um, like, what do I do all day? I, I spend time with my dog. Let me see if I have the, the pup cam on. Yeah, he's crashed out. He's at my feet. I installed a little puppy cam for you guys. <laughs> so so you're like, hey, I want to see the dog. There he is. That's all him in his glory taking a nap on the floor. Um, so when, when I got here and I'm like, man, I'm kind of bored and you guys do it too. We can't rely on other people to, to validate us or to make us feel good. We have to do it ourselves. So I signed up for a CrossFit gym. I bought a mountain bike. I joined Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Like I've got things to do. And if, and if I'm bored, I find more things to do. What does she do? She has a good cry and she feels sorry for herself and then watches TV. There is a lesson to be learned here is that we all go through it, but there are positive ways to go through it and there are negative ways. This one, she just ended up like a lump on the couch. And if she had a boyfriend, she'd be saying, honey, let's do something. I'm bored. She'd leave it up to him to be the entertainment director. She says, anyway, old mate Ted couldn't fill the day only, for only so long, and it got me pondering, what do I actually want? I, if, I know it's not kids. That maternal side just never really kicked in, but a boyfriend would be quite nice. So what's the method to getting one? Do I need to brush up on some of the rules? Like how long do you wait before you do the deed? In other words, sleep with each other. What are some of the conversation starters that let the guy know you're looking for a forever person without looking too desperate? How long are you supposedly casually, uh, supposed to casually date before you shift gears into something more serious? I'm a bit out of practice. This is the dating coach that's on TV. This is the quote dating coach that's writing articles and she has her own podcast. And, and at almost 40 years, uh, at almost 40 years old, she's saying, I'm out of practice. I don't know any of the rules of how to date anymore. Why? Because it's go out, have a bit of fun. Cute guy flirts with you. You give him his number. Uh, he calls you. You go out for dinner. You shag him. You go until maybe he stops talking to you. Repeat for decades. And, and women are, are seeing her and listening to her advice and they're failing. They're ending up being 35, 40, 45 in the same place she is, which is holy crap. No one wants me and I'm, I'm old and I'm unhappy and, and I'm single. And she's out of practice. Now, I'm out of practice for dating, but I can still tell you what I want. I can tell you what I'm looking for. I can tell you what I would accept in a relationship. She has no idea. 
she just feels lucky to have some hot guy hitting on her and she gets to sleep with him a little bit. She says, I have one of my best friend, Triple M star uh, Jess Eva or Eva on my kind of sorted dating podcast this week. And I decided she was the perfect, perfect, perfect person to ask considering she'd been in a relationship with her partner, Norm, for a whopping 10 years. I don't know about you, but 10 years, if you find the right person, shouldn't be whopping. You should just be happy together. And this is, she's a little bit older. He's a little bit older. If you ask me, he's a, a I keep forgetting to put it back over on my, there you go. Um, like he's a pretty good looking bloke. I, I think he's probably better looking than she is. In my opinion, he could probably be doing better, but that's just my opinion. Um, but the, but the point is maybe she did something right and she kept a guy. Uh, she said, uh, she came up with the best responses. She said, you've got to just be you want to sleep with them on the first date. Do it. Want to text them constantly. Do it. If someone's turned off by it, then they weren't for you. It's actually very simple. Just be yourself. When we play these games or be who we think they want us to be, then we are just delaying the inevitable. Treat them like a best friend and they will stay for life. I actually agree with this a little bit is, is just be yourself. It's better to be yourself and have people hate you than pretending you're someone not and have them like you because you'll know the like, in, the like that they show you is disingenuous and you're not even being a real person. You're not even being yourself, which will also make you unhappy. So I actually agree with her friend on this of just be yourself and you, and you want to sleep with them on the first date, go for it. Yes. And, and, and it's, they, she says right here, you're just delaying the inevitable. So yeah, if you want to sleep with them on the first date and you just do it, go for it. Don't, don't artificially not sleep with him. If you're easy, be easy. At least he'll know it. And if you have scruples and don't want to sleep with him on the first five dates, don't, don't pretend you're something you're not. Don't do it. And then when he breaks up with you because you actually have standards and, and he doesn't get his way with you quickly, good. This is something that I've, I've, I've said many times. Don't lie. Be yourself. Be genuine. And if no one likes you, who cares? At least you're being your genuine self. But, she, but her friends got it right at least. So now Jana's like at almost 40. Oh my gosh, maybe I should be a genuine person instead of just, you know, being what I think they want me to be. And, and partying it up and sleeping around. Shocking. I am shocked. Shocked. Well, not that shocked. She says, I realized I was doing that oh so tragic female tradition of overthinking things. How cliche. When you think about it, guys are very black and white. Sure, many of them play games, but when a guy likes you, he lets you know. Over the past year, I've made many new friends, and if I want to see them, I just pick up the phone or shoot off a quick text. No games, no... uh umming and eyeing, just showing up for the friendship. So why don't we treat dating the same? Because we get scared of being rejected, of having our heart broken, of investing in someone who can turn around after a few weeks and say, no thanks. But how do we know if we don't give it a go? I came across a quote recently that gave me a little light bulb moment. So I shared it on my Instagram and I don't think I've ever had such a strong reaction from my followers. It went along the lines of this. Couples have dated for 10 years, then got married and divorced after a year. Strangers have slept together on the first date and are now celebrating their 15th anniversary. Some get married after six months and are still happily married. There's no formula to this. Do what makes you happy. I had people sliding in my DMs with their own stories of one night stands that turned into their own happily ever after situation or people who rushed down the aisle with the wrong person because they felt a sense of duty. So throw out the rules and just dive right in. If it feels right, and if you've uh, got a sense that you're that they are playing games, well then heck, you may have just found the one. Oh, if you don't get a sense they're playing games, my bad. Uh, our most successful relationships have always been the easiest ones. So go and find that best friend you want to see naked from time to time. It sounds pretty guard, uh, darn good to me. So I don't agree with all her, her insight on this one, obviously. But... But what she's coming to the realization is that, hey, maybe I should be genuine. Maybe I should be real. Maybe if I'm just going to want to casually sleep with a dude, I casually sleep with him. And if I want a relationship, I want a relationship and stop pretending it's other than that. I think that's actually a very smart revelation. The problem is if she wants to have a long-term relationship or anybody that wants to have a long-term relationship, you need to say so. I would like a long-term relationship. And if they don't, you don't sleep with them. If you just want to hook up, then just say, hey, I just want to hook up and then hook up. But don't, the problem is today women say, I want a long-term relationship, 
but I'm going to hook up with him and sleep with him to try to get him to want a long-term relationship, even though he says he doesn't. And then it doesn't work. And then they're angry and they repeat this until they're 40. This is a dating coach. And she's coming to realizations about this stuff now. It blows my mind. She's 40 years old and is just now starting to figure out what dating's actually about and what it's not like to be not used and be genuine. And But here's the thing. I want to show you her Instagram to wrap this up. I want to show you her Instagram. Look at this. What do you notice about her Instagram? Me, 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 me. It's all about me selfies and photos and me and friends and me and alcohol and me partying and me with a mask and me and me and me and me. She even has this one here, which I think is funny. It says, um, if you peeped through my window and saw how many attempts it took to get this thirst trap photo, no, you didn't. Thank you for brightening my, my lockdown uh, so-and-so with a drawer full of gorgeous new lingerie. Someone gave her lingerie. Gee, I wonder why. Uh, she says, totes, don't give this permission for this photo to be repurposed anywhere. My mom will be super cranky at, at you if you do. She knows this is a thirst trap photo. She knows it's a thirst trap photo. And this is from like how long ago? How long ago was this from? 14 weeks ago, three months. The, she, I mean, look at her here. She's, she's blasted out of her face. Drinking. There's a lot, here's another one with wine. Like it's just selfies of her and drinking. And then she wonders like, I don't understand. I don't understand why I'm single, why I can't find somebody. What's going on? How do I date? How do you, what's the proper length of time to do this? What's the, how do you do? She doesn't know crap. And, and women are following her advice and are doing the same thing. This is why, guys, this is why dating's falling apart. And again, so many guys blame themselves saying, I don't understand why I can't keep a woman. Look, if you're a good dude, it, it's not about you being a good dude. It's not about you being intelligent or, or uh, financially secure or funny. It's about, are you hot? Like, do you, do you set off her butterflies? And, it, and if she does, if you don't, she's moving on until maybe she gets close to 40 and then she's going to come around. It just, it's just another, it's just another reason why I say guys, don't worry about the dating apps. Do your thing. And and when they come around, when they come sniffing around after they've had all the fun and games and 300 body count, whatever, just move along. Just move along or date younger and make keep it casual. And that way you'll keep yourselves, you'll keep yourself safe.